Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3, where today, would you look at that, we've got a perfectly good access point into that shrine, and while we can't make out all the details until we actually get in there, that looks like a lever, which I imagine is how we shut off the defenses and open up the gate. So, you know, I was, uh, I was puzzling over ways to get us out there, but then I Onward. remembered we can just do this. So let's get a peek inside. This is a slightly risky play, of course, since we have no idea what might be lurking in there, but I'm not too worried. Worst case scenario, we can always fall back. Oh, we've got another petrified drow. Oh, nope, two, three. So at least four petrified drow, plus some other assorted corpses. That does not bode well. That implies what? Lesser Gorgon... Lesser Basilisk? Cockatrice? Into the shadows. There's number five. I mean, I can't imagine they throw something that deadly at us at level five. Not unless they've made petrification a whole lot easier to deal with. Stone to Flesh is a sixth level spell. Okay. Oh, I see. Right, so that's powering the defenses. How do we shut that off? I assumed it was the switch, but now it's looking like the switch is just the gate. Okay, well, the gate's open, but the statues are clearly still active, so... Oh, maybe this? What else do we have here? We have training dummies, we have a book. Yeah, it's gotta be the staff. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Let's toss that over. Yeah, that, 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 that can't be right. <laughs> okay, well, um, you know what? I would have liked to find the right way to turn this thing off, but I guess we'll just lay into it. Oh, <laughs> well, I was about to say that I don't think Lazelle would care anyway, but, um, Apparently, Shadow does. Though I have to assume she'll feel differently about that if and when she ever recovers her memories. Still breathing, despite everything. Breathe deep and move. Oh, right. Should have tested that before I had Lazel just come bolting out the front. But it worked, so no harm done. Something over there. Ah, and that is no doubt another way in. Though that would have been close enough that the defenses would have fired at us, so I'm not I'm not sure what good that really would have done us. I did have someone suggest that uh, apparently the problem might have been That uh, when I had Oric try to get in with the staff, that the defenses weren't firing at him, but rather were firing at Rex, who was following him. But no, no, I, I tested it off screen, definitely firing at him. Hence why we went for the vault instead. 
Though, I mean, to be fair, apparently we could have also just gone back up to the goblin camp and come down through the Shattered Sanctum. That would have also apparently dropped us right in here, but, uh, but I figured, you know, where's the fun in that? We're already down here. In search of the night song. This tome appears fairly new printed. It can't be more than a decade or two old. Fascinating that such a seemingly valuable object has proven so difficult to track down. Indeed, treasure hunters the realm over have traveled to the Sword Coast with one goal in mind. To find the Night Song. Yet each by each they have failed, indicating dead ends, rebuffs, or else disappearing altogether. My latest inquiry was with a half-orc named Grayley, who insisted he'd come as close as possible to the relic, as one may go without forfeiting his or her life. He indicated that the object is not, as most reports indicate, in the Sailor Knight Fort adjacent to the river Chianthar. It is, in fact, held in an old Sharan fortress, somewhere in the environs of Moonrise Towers. However, Grayley reported that some kind of potent shadow prevents one from approaching where this fortress might be. Right, right, yes, that would, uh, that would match what Halson told us. That's the Shadow Cursed Lands. So essentially, this book just exists to reassure us that Night Song, whatever it is, is not in the starting area and is instead in what I assume is Act 2. Beneath Moonrise Towers in the Shadow Cursed Lands. Right, right, and this is just below the Shattered Sanctum, which is where we were previously told Night Song would be. So it makes sense they'd put a book here that tells us it's actually somewhere else. I do find it peculiar, though, that they, um, they keep going out of their way to never quite tell us what it actually is. You know, we've got a name, we've got a, we've got a rough location. But for all we know, it could be the Gith D20 we've been carting around. Though, given the name, I, I suspect it's a completely different type of fake out instead. One of Char's nicknames is the Night Singer. That would certainly seem to imply that the Night Song is some aspect or extension of her. Especially if it is explicitly in a Sharan fortress. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to just be Shadow. Like she was a former chosen or destined of Salune, stolen and corrupted by, by Salune's sister. And ultimately, whatever we find in the Sharan Fortress would allow us to decide whether she should stay as she is, as a servant of Shar, or return to what she was supposed to be as a servant of Salune. I mean, yeah, that, that would be a bit much, but why not? We're already traveling with the former paramour of Mistra and the uh, son of the Archduke of Baldur's Gate. All right, let's have a look at those logbooks. A faded logbook. Only the first few pages are filled in. Log 124. Signs of life near the outpost. Intelligent. Clearly trying to hide. Log 125. Still can't find the mysterious shapes. They know how to cover their tracks. Possibly drow. The next few entries are too faded to read. Log 129. Led them south. Rumors of a spectator there. Let the Underdark solve its own problems. Ooh, that's bad news. Spectators are like lesser beholders. Log 130. No sightings. Log 131. No sightings. Log 132. Mint saw statues down south, shaped like drow. Spectators shouldn't do that. Either way, that's one less problem to worry about. Are you like a million percent sure about that? Because I feel like a spectator just outside your fortress walls is a much bigger concern than a drow scouting party. Though I suppose it is the drow that ultimately killed them.
Unless it wasn't. Most of this small logbook is left empty. The last entry reads, Log 182. I was wrong. Should have paid more attention to the drow sightings. Should have known they were only a prelude. Stupid to think we had outsmarted them. This will be my last entry. Mint will keep the records from now on. Okay, so we need to clearly find Mint's logbook. Because now this is starting to sound like another fake out. I mean, there's definitely a bunch of petrified drow just outside their fortress. We, we saw them on the way in. So if that was the drow scouting party, then who actually attacked the Selenites? Right, yeah, because, like, the defenses were still active when we got here. So, in theory, there should have still been drow corpses around the front gate. If they were the ones who had attacked. Ooh, here we go. Tattered notes. This time-worn note is thin and ragged. A harsh touch might cause it to disintegrate. Mint, I presume? This place is dark, but the lady's light shines yet. Just as the drow had almost broken through, Jaris rallied the last of the initiates and charged forth. For a moment, the cavern shone with Salune's own brilliance. I'd have gladly gone with them, wound or no, but Jaris bade me stay and hold the gate until his return. I am to keep the records, too. I'll save space to write of his victory. It's been days, hours, since we collapsed the tunnel. They were supposed to return after the battle. I cannot dig it out on my own. My eyes won't get used to this darkness, but I can hear them stripping the dead. I'm sorry, I haven't learned the death rites yet, but I will hold the gate, I promise. This final entry is barely visible, more faint scratches than legible writing. Sorry. Oof, that is... That is grim. Though it still leaves the door open for it to have potentially not been Drow, he did specify Drow in the opening. But then very distinctly stated he could not see who was looting the bodies afterwards. So again, it, it feels like deliberate obfuscation. I don't know, it's just we haven't really seen much in the way of other signs of Drow activity down here. Oh, but we do have a chest. Ladder and back. That's got to be our way back up to the Shattered Sanctum. Maybe? They kept talking about collapsing a tunnel, but it actually seemed to be the tunnel outside the fortress, not inside. Maybe the tunnel outside is where the drow were coming up. Yeah, yeah, that could be it. You know, that that could be the sequence of events. Perhaps a drow scouting party came from the deeper underdark, the underdarker. Uh, stumbled across the keep, but then got lured into something that turned them to stone over here. Then uh, Jarus and his initiates went outside to collapse the tunnel that they had come from. Only that attracted something else. Did we, uh, did we ever get any real clues as to what happened to the priests up top? Is the assumption they were just wiped out by Dark Templars? Because if that's the case, that could be what happened down here as well. Obvious secret door. You know, one thing that really does kind of throw me here is that um, I, in looking at this place and the Shattered Sanctum above, it really does feel like this is all stuff that happened, you know, decades ago or a century ago. That's curious. 
But that book we found downstairs on the statue, that was just printed like 10 or 20 years ago, so... So this was all relatively recent. Helmet of Smiting. With Bolstering Smite, when you apply a condition with one of your Smite spells, you gain temporary hit points equal to your Charisma modifier, plus one con saves. A set of runes has been expertly worked into the helmet's filigree, almost imperceptible, but powerful nonetheless. If you happen to be a paladin, which we are not, so pretty much useless for us. But we'll take it. Let's see what else we've got here. Step carefully. There's a trap. Shadow, you want to take care of that? Work to do. Luminous Armor, a uh, magic breastplate, no pluses, with Radiating Shockwave. When the wearer deals radiant damage, they cause Radiant Shockwave, which inflicts Radiating Orb, which in turn causes a minus one attack roll for each remaining turn, sheds bright light, reduces duration, by two each time the entity makes an attack, but there's no duration listed, just a radius. Huh. Shadow does have Sacred Flame. Might be worth experimenting with. Albeit at the cost of plus one initiative. And plus one on dex rolls. Which, honestly, she probably benefits more from, considering she's our roguelike. And we never did figure out what to do with this. The Staff of the Moon Maiden. It really did feel like it was supposed to be... part of a puzzle or something. That would be a net plus one AC. How does this stuff look? I am willing to make some sacrifices for fashion. Yeah, I mean, strictly practically speaking, I feel like she gets more from the hide than she would from the luminous armor. And then the helmet's pretty much a wash. It's basically plus one deck saves versus plus one con saves. Oh, <laughs> my goodness, that, that is a very sharp helmet. I feel like we should be uh, suffering piercing damage just looking at it. Yeah, I, I think we'll hold off on that. That's, that's a bit much. Though I am still curious about the lustrous armor. Let's get going. Again, I may, uh, I may experiment with that off-screen, or, you know, feel free to share your opinions on that. Anyway, I, uh, I think we're pretty much done here. Sadly, no real notable upgrades. Boots have seen everything. But at least we found some interesting lore. Actually, wait, where... We do have one more small mystery. Where does this crevice go? I assume into the temple somewhere, but we didn't find the other side. Oh, okay. I see. 
Right, yeah, that wall does look compromised. I guess we just didn't get close enough to that corner to actually ping perception checks. Fair enough. I'm ready. Is that blood? No, never mind. Okay, so I think we are done here. Aside from possibly going up that ladder to see where that puts us, but... Just out of view. But for now, I think we have much more intriguing leads to pursue. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Starting with whatever busted this drow patrol. Which may also provide us with additional context as to what happened to the shrine. Oh, uh, we have vents. One sec, let me grab something to plug those up with. Okay. Let's make our approach. We'll clear the explosives en route. Get those out of the way early. Oh. Uh, sorry. Right. Yeah, I guess you are technically still alive, aren't you? You're just petrified. Lolf sworn. So they are definitely evil. Man, I would love I would love to unpetrify one of these guys and talk to them, but there's like six of them, and we only have the one oil. Plus plus even that would be kind of a waste if they they just end up attacking us on sight or something. Out of sight, out of mind. What do we have here? Yeah, fair enough. Didn't think it would work, but worth a shot. Alright, let's uh let's look for clues, I guess. Traps, please. Maybe we can find something to help pinpoint their leader. Or at least whatever turned them into a spectator sport. Oh, shoot. Blew up our backpack. I see. Well, that is a problem. Ow. Oh god, so many things are happening. Oh jeez. Cool. Um, oh, wait, wait, okay, hold on, please, just let's back up a second here. Right, we have two drow unpetrified, they are charmed. We're currently standing in a cloud of darkness, courtesy of Dorn over there. Works at like 30%. Now at half. Okay, okay. So uh, apparently we do in fact have a spectator. And it was in fact responsible for petrifying these guys. Got to focus. Guess we really shouldn't have taken Jarus' word on what spectators can and can't do. Alright, obviously we're going to try to avoid 
killing the drow. We'll full focus the spectator. Hope for the best. What defenses are we looking at here? Oh, 14. That's nothing. Okay, let's go uh, let's go damage boost on Thalar Aluv. Yeah, yeah, we we have to go all out here. We cannot afford to give this thing another turn, especially if it can petrify. Though, if it could, you'd think it would have opened with that. And we'll, uh, we'll hedge our bets with these guys, too. There's no guarantee they'll stop attacking, so at the very least we should break line of sight. Survival is all that matters. One day I'll catch a break. Man, I really hope we take this thing down. Otherwise, Oryx in trouble. Done. Let's get Rex in there. Right, I didn't have her close enough. Time to strike. No time to waste. Oh, there we go. Okay. Lazel, my goodness. Yeah, let's keep that going. You know what? Three out of four. We'll take it. That still gets us two thirds of the way there. Karlak? Jimmy on the go. One, two. Oh. Come on. Are you seriously telling me that? We got it within the margin that we might have made if I had just started the fight with Shadow closer. Gosh dang it. Ah! Alright, well, you know, try not to die, I guess. Can't even catch my breath. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Oh! Are you kidding me? I... Wow, okay. I did not see that coming. <coughs> Dust on my... at a parlay, and he brings a spectator. Squit. Quite ruined my ambush. Now, you are? Oric, uh, Oric Alcum. I have some concerns with what you just said, but uh, I'm, I'm the one who rescued you? Rescue? Helpless babes are rescued. I allowed you to assist me. I am Dawn. Third son of House Bartol, first rank evoker, and initiate of Graven Hollows. Oh. Oh no, no, my dear dark gods below, no! A memory shard. 
a container onto which brief mental impressions are projected and stored for years at a time. Yeah, sorry, you've, uh, you've been here for a while. Far, far longer than I realized. Then my enemies have already found the forge. Which bastard stole my glory? Zagrim? Philro? You know, I just moved into the area. Wh which forge are we talking about? The Adamantine Forge. If it had been found, the name would ring throughout the Underdark. Unless... Huh. Ha! The fools must have turned back, or, better yet, died in the search. Good. If they had just surrendered their research to me, we might have found the forge together. But no. They hoarded their knowledge, left each of us clinging to scraps. I had the good sense to lock mine away in the shard. And now I can claim the forge alone. In that memory shard, you say? The one you were just holding in front of us? Hey, uh, just out of pure intellectual curiosity, what kind of knowledge are we talking about here? Bold of you to ask. The others knew of the forge's defenses, its operation, but I know where to find it. The rest I can figure out with time. Now I am the only one searching. Or... almost the only one. You proved your power in freeing me. But I need no more rivals. Try to take this as a compliment, yes? Oh no! Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. I guess we have to kill you. And take that crystal. Wow, buddy, you, uh, you really should have waited until your pals were unpetrified. Um, okay, well. Dorn, it has been a pleasure. Sorry you had to go so soon. Stop that. Thank you. And down he goes. <laughs> Gotta say, Doran, you, uh, you may have had eyes bigger than your mouth here. Oh, right. Uh, also, you may have noticed I swapped gear around again. Um, I've got the short bow back on uh, Shadow, and I've got the Bane bow on Lazel now. Because it turns out in 5th edition, heavy crossbows are actually martial proficiencies. Not simple like they were back in 3rd. And yeah, yeah, it, uh, it does look like Harold actually banes people. I guess it just hides the associated resistance check. Hence why it seemed like nothing at all happened when we shot that Minotaur. Anyway, let's uh, collect our prizes, shall we? Drow Hood. 
plus one deck save. A supple leather cowl, its spiderweb embroidery is stained, and pieces of leather and thread are slowly disintegrating. Nothing all that special, but let's see how it looks. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll rock that for a while. Looking ahead. Let's grab that crystal. Find out what Adorn meant. Can't slow down. Memory shard. Coiled shadows move within this crystal, as if something were trapped within. Icy Helv, the ice-cold handle of what must once have been a staff. A single screw sticks out from the top. Obvious multi-part relic. He mentioned two rivals. Perhaps they have the other parts. The Blast Pendant grants Lightning Blast. Though they only work together for a short time, it is hard to overstate the influence Lenore the Cleric of Mistra had on Yur the Sparkstruck who often likened harnessing lightning to manipulating the weave. Lightning Blast. Focus the electricity in your veins to strengthen your next lightning spell or cantrip. Your next lightning spell or cantrip deals additional lightning damage equal to your remaining lightning charges. On hit, all of your lightning charges are consumed. I've got to say, I feel like they may have leaned a little too hard into this whole lightning charge meta. Let's see what we've got imprisoned on this memory shard, shall we? Which is a job for Demonicus Deville. regards you lifelessly. Hail, my ally in evil. I am afraid you passed on, slaughtered by wretched heroes. But tell me, where was this adamantine forge you sought? Look inside. Memory shard. Hmm, yes, yes, of course. And uh, how might one go about doing that? True title, activates Dawn, Lord Archmage. Lord Archmage, huh? Gotta say, Dorn, you really kind of set yourself up for failure here. So, how'd you end up getting so stoned, anyway? Sarkrim, argument. Summon Spectator! And pray tell, why would Zargrim do that? He wanted... Memory Shard! Why? What's so great about this Memory Shard? Shoes way to Adamantine Fall! The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Hmm. Uh. Dorn, the level four Lord Archmage. You know, say what you will about this guy, but uh, he was he was not lacking in confidence. I can appreciate that. Well, we've got the password, so let's crack this thing open. The crystal shines only faintly. A memory shard, the wizard had called it. The crystal's glow swells, drawing you into its depths. You are transported, 
somewhere deep, loud, and hot as the hells themselves. Within the Underdark's bowels, beyond an ancient stronghold, hovers a giant hammer waiting to fall. An echoing clang, and you're back to yourself, left only with a firm sense of a place, a grand forge. Interesting. Another quest for the pile. Oh yeah, Oscar. So I guess we will meet him again. Otherwise, why would they leave that open-ended? Oh, right. We still have to figure out what to do with that necromancy book, too. I actually completely forgot about that. All right, okay. Now, uh, what do we do with these guys? I mean, I guess... I guess we could just smash them. I mean, this does feel questionable. Okay, now that that feels weird. I'll uh, I'll maybe do that off screen. Because seriously, like, what are our alternatives here? We leave them there until they get smashed by someone else, or or some good Samaritan eventually comes along and unfreezes them, only to get shanked for their trouble. The Spectator Eyes, a very rare amulet that grants Ray of Fear and Wounding Ray. Spectators are hideous aberrations that float above the ground, fiercely staring around and shooting beams at anything they don't appreciate. Two turn duration, Ray of Fear. 2d8 damage, Wounding Ray. Wow, that... Not gonna lie, that kind of sucks for a once per long rest. Man, what a, what a letdown. Though to be fair, I suppose this thing did go down pretty easy. And this is just Act 1. They're not going to be giving us endgame loot this early. I really wish killing the spectator had just unparalyzed all these guys. Would have been nice to get a, an actual fight, you know. Oh, hey, and that's, uh... That's below Auntie Ethel's place. Yeah, those are the fairy circles. Nice. Which means that there is the structure we never got around to exploring. And that, of course, is our mystery village. I didn't realize it was so close. All right, well, let's uh, let's clear this ledge here real quick. Then I think we'll be at a good stopping point. This will make a good staging grounds for our continued explorations. I figure we'll uh, hit that village next. Or... Uh, See if we can get back over to the fairy circles. Check out that other structure. I am very curious to see what it is. No time to rest. Never wanted the easy path. Step carefully. Ooh, There's a tricky. Is this thing going to go off if I loot that? We'll maybe save that for last. Trap. 
There we go. Knew it had to be in there somewhere. It's headshot. Let's get this stuff boxed in. What to do? Need to find a way forward. And this brings us down between the village and the fairy circles. Perfect. All right, guys, one sec. Pack it up. Oof, yes. <laughs> Saw that coming. How about over here? Nope. Though it does lead to some very intriguing pathways. Ah, including some that seem to circle back to where we just were. Yeah, we really should fill in those gaps, I suppose. At this point, I think, though, we're just kind of going in a big circle um, clockwise around the entire map. All right, I think we're done. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll take care of the usual off-screen bookkeeping. Take another pass through the shrine. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Figure out what we're doing with these guys. And uh, we will pick up here next time. As we forge ahead. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant, Eloise, Crow King LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. Oh no, no, my dear dark gods below, no!